Welcome my friends to another tutorial. I hope you're keeping all, all, all keeping very well. Um, this week I am going to paint something which I had on my Facebook page for a while. Uh, I got some great responses and some lots of requests. So it's a sailboat. Um, I'm sticking with the sailboat theme, seascape theme, okay? Primarily reflections. Simple reflections but really effective. So I'm going to paint a picture that I put on my Facebook page I'm going to show you now um, isn't that gorgeous um, a nice simple scene warm colors so I'm not going to paint this one uh, exactly the same uh, because I don't like to paint the very same painting twice uh, unless the first one sells or something like that but I have that one hanging in a restaurant here in Cork for sale so I'm going to paint something very similar it's a slightly different setting but the same colors and we're going to add a sail so the reference photograph I'm using is a boat on the water uh, there's no sail out but I'm going to add a sail I'll add a nice sail to it a purple sail or maybe a blue or something like that so concentrating on nice realistic kind of reflections it's actually very very simple to do uh, even if you're a complete beginner I think using this tutorial you will have a really a lot of fun uh, trying this with some fantastic results. So I have my canvas here ready, my palette ready, only a, a few colours, so nice and simple, uh, nothing too complicated. Uh, let's go and have a bit of fun with this. This is going to be a lovely colourful painting. Um, cool colours, mauves, purples, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, grab your stuff if you want to follow me along and um, I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. There is a reference photograph. Now, isn't that gorgeous? Um, lots of pinks, mauves, a little bit of warm yellow in there. Really nice. So, uh, yeah, let's have a bit of fun with this. Now, I have a coffee, a lovely coffee. I love my coffee in the mornings. It's around 10 a.m. here in the morning in Ireland. And um, lovely sunny morning. I felt, you know what? Let's do a bit of painting. Okay, let's start. I have my 16 by 12 canvas. I didn't prime this, okay? It's not primed. It's just a raw canvas in its natural state. Um, it does have a loose coat of primer from the factory. But I want this to be able to kind of soak the paint in as I'm painting. That will allow me then to paint the boat and all that kind of stuff without mixing too much, if you understand. Um, so, yeah, here we go. There's my palette. I'll tell you what colours I have. Titanium white, a little Naples yellow, a lizarding crimson, Phthalo blue, cobalt blue, magenta, beautiful pink colour, and a little black. That's my colours. That's all we need, I think. Um, so let's uh, let's have a bit of fun with this. I have my linseed oil here, my turpentine with a little linseed oil in it, some paper towels, and a few brushes. Okay, simple brushes. Now I'm going to start with my large stubby brush. Look, it's a beautiful brush. If you want a set of these, just. Uh, Click on the link below, okay? You can buy a set off me. They're fantastic brushes. You can hold them nice and tight in your hand like that, you know? It's very good. Um, let's mix the colour for the sky. I'm not going to bother putting masking tape on here because I really don't need You can if you like, but I, there's no need, really. Let's, uh, okay, let's go to... Let's start with the bottom. I wouldn't normally start from the top down, but I think just to get the horizon line in... I would start at the bottom so i'm going to mix a nice mauve for this a nice soft soft mauve i'll dampen my brush dry it slightly um i'm going to take a little crimson so look nice and thin you see nice and thin color little white that will make it nice and pasty i'm going to take a tiny amount of now we have two blues we have a choice phthalo blue is more kind of on the greeny bluey side so i'm thinking perhaps cobalt I want to keep my phthalo blue just for the very dark shadows around the boat and that kind of thing. So I'll go with cobalt. It's a nice forgiving blue, you see? It's a nice soft blue. It doesn't overpower the palette too much. Um, okay, let's pick a point for a horizon line. I want to go high enough. I don't want to go too low with this, but I don't want to go too high either. On the photograph, it almost looks halfways. I don't know if I want to go that high. I might bring it down a little bit and what will happen is by bringing the horizon line down just a touch um, it will help give a little more distance in the painting but I also want to leave enough there for my reflections so I'm bearing that in mind now we can always move the boat up slightly if we want 
let's just put this nice mauve color across like that i'll go to there now it's a little bit more blue on the bottom i, I can see that so i'm going to add a little bit more blue into the bottom okay i just took a little tiny bit of cobalt blue i'm going to soften that up and then as it comes up it's going to go more pinky isn't it so i'm just going to dip this in my turpentine once and soak it on the tissue just give it a rub get most of the color off okay it's not spotless but it's fine then into crimson lots of white and i'm going to go with that first okay so just a light pink i want this now this painting to be nice and light and subtle so lots of white in this i'll go to there and then what i'm going to do is soften across here and my mixes are really very thin okay they're really very thin soften that down go up and down up and down up and down okay very lightly and i'll stop there that's a nice soft color now isn't it again i'll clean my brush very quickly i'm then going to go into some naples yellow go into this crimson here a little bit of crimson little naples yellow and some white okay there's a very light glow up in the sky there isn't there now that's still a bit pinky so let's take more naples yellow if you were using cadmium yellow for this it would be very overpowering it would be just too overpowering naples yellow is the best color for this i have it on every single palette i just love it i'm going to start like that and now i'm going to start going really light okay so you can see the naples yellow has a hint of crimson in it just the slightest little hint let's now take with a clean brush some crimson lots of white okay oh no i made a mistake you see this show is all about real and being real i made a mistake it should be naples yellow and white my apologies and lots of that i think even lighter again more white more naples yellow I'll start there with the pink starts and then I basically want to go right up now into a very whitey yellow okay almost white let's take a hint of Naples yellow and lots of white in this and I don't know if you can see this on camera now or not because the colors don't kind of show on camera very much I hope you can some of the lighter colors have difficulty transferring on camera i'll just go up about there okay now i'm going to just take a little more i can see there's a beautiful yellowy glow in that sky i'm just going to put a bit of naples yellow across the middle here okay just to add a little more yellow into it and the great thing about naples yellow is that you can get away with adding plenty it just disappears as you put it on you see but it's very forgiving we have a nice warm sky there now lovely and warm um then it goes from that yellow to a sort of greeny blue doesn't it so give me two seconds now i just need to clean my brush let's take some cobalt blue tiny tiny amount and then i'm going to take lots of white and i'll show you then what we're going to do here a very bright whitey blue Because this painting is all about the boat and the reflections i don't want to overpower the sky let me just i have something rattling underneath my studio desk here really annoying now there we go so a light blue right across up here then that's going to soften down into my yellow and that will give me a natural kind of a greeny blue and again you probably can't see this on camera but when the when the painting is finished and i show you the ref the, the finished painting at the end you'll see the colors properly okay again i do apologize um i don't know is it the lighting in the studio or what but it probably is it's very very pale blue going across there it's almost you can hardly even see it okay it's that kind of a blue um soften that right down there into that yellow 
and soften it across. I have a very, very thin layer of colour on my canvas, okay? Really thin. Now, there are a couple of tiny clouds up there, isn't there? I'm going to take a small little flat brush, all right? It doesn't have to be perfect. And what I'm going to do is, uh, let me see, I'm going to mix a nice little purple for this. A little crimson and a little cobalt blue. I, it's just really a tiny amount of cloud, so you know you only need a tiny amount of paint for this. I have a nice, rich, kind of a warm blue here now, yeah. And I'm just going to go, just make sure they're nice and straight going across, okay? Not up and down like this. Just a couple of little straight brush strokes coming across, like that. You see. Because when they're so far away, they're going to be completely horizontal. All right? That's usually what happens with clouds when they're far, far off in the distance horizon. They're just straight across. And what I'm going to do then is take a little bit more pink in that. And I'm going to pop one or two warm ones just slightly up. You see? Now, it's just adding a little touch of interest into the sky without overdoing it. Again, I'm going to rub my brush on the tissue and I'm going to go into the crimson with a hint of Naples yellow. And I'm going to make a nice warm cloud for up here, okay? Just one or two popping in up here. Just add a little bit of warmth to one of those. So you can see what I mean. It's just a tiny hint. It's just a little impression of a cloud, that's all. I want to keep them warm. Now, I think that's even just enough. Really, I don't really feel the need to keep going. Now, soft brush, okay? Soft makeup brush. I'm very lightly just soften those in. Make them nice and soft. There. Done. Sky finished. Moving along. I will go to another flat brush, okay? It's like a medium flat. Medium size. So around number six, seven, eight, that kind of a thing. I'm going to make a nice little purple for along here. I'm going to go with cobalt blue, little crimson. And I want this nice and dark, okay? Plenty of cobalt, not too much crimson, okay? More on the bluey side. With that, again, it's a thin mix, okay? It's not lots of thick paint. Let's just go, okay, let's just go like that, right? Now, on the reference photograph, you can see that it's like a row of trees, but I'm not going to suggest a row of trees. Um, Look, I can, I suppose you could if you wanted to, but it's more or less just a bit of land off in the distance. That's kind of all I'm aiming for, all right? A little bit more blue. And then I'm going to just pop a little bit of blue across in the distance like that, you see? It's just a suggestion, that's all. Okay? Nice and simple. And I'll darken the right-hand side. Cobalt blue, a little crimson, and a hint of black. And that will really darken this side. I'm just kind of getting rid of, rid of any brush strokes. You see, I'm just kind of dabbing it like this, just to get rid of some brush strokes, that's all. And that's it. That's fine. I think that's all we need. The last thing I'll do just with that, just to kind of sit that down nicely, and that will give us a nice light and dark with our water, is I'm just going to simply take a little black and a little crimson. All right? Little thinners in this. I'm just going to go along the end of that. I'm just dragging my brush very loosely across the end of that, okay? Just to add a little bit of detail it's not so much detail really it's just to sit these down 
and give you the impression that there's a little bit of land off in the distance very very far away you can't really see what it is it's just be a harbour or something like that just a little bit of land and you can see i'm making the brush strokes very erratic see kind of up and down adding little hints of interest here and there um if you wanted to you could even just suggest one or two little sails one or two little uprights here and there a little couple of dabs with the brush and that just gives you a nice bit of interest for that distance here and breaks up that line it breaks up the horizon line you see and that's it okay done sorted nice and simple now wasn't that nice and simple so far just simple colors nothing too extravagant no detail nothing like that just very very loose and i love painting like this next i'm going to um let me see now should i i'm wondering should i sketch out the boat and paint around it or should i just paint my entire water surface i think i'll just paint the water completely and we'll forget the boat is even there okay so let's start um i'll go with the same mauve color up there bit of blue a little bit of pink and let me just quickly i'm kind of looking backward and forward now to the reference photograph just for the colors just to get a fair impression of the color um okay i might take a hint of this i'll take a tiny hint of black tiniest 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 hint just to tone it down ever so slightly and a little white i think so sort of a gray mauve type of a color that we have let's put that in right across here under that dark line okay so you can see how wet this is this is quite wet i'm going to darken it slightly now the the thinking behind this is that when I'm doing something like this, okay, I don't think of reflections, I look at colours, all right? And I basically fill in the background colours, all right? So I'll come in now to about there. Now, I don't know, is my horizon line slightly off? It is, is it? Will I bring it up slightly on this side? That's a bit better. Okay um i just look at the background colors so for example over here i can see a lovely pinky color Pe peachy kind of a pink so let's take some crimson and some naples yellow okay i must get some naples yellow from my palette nice dab of naples yellow there and then some white again these are very soft colors there put that color in i'm gonna soften it up here right the way up and then let it soften out over into that color there and remember i will be putting lots of little ripples and all that kind of stuff on this later again coming down you can see it goes into a more yellowy color it's the very same as the sky really so all I'm doing is painting the same as the sky, but upside down. Does that make sense? Little Naples yellow, plenty of white. And we soften that color in here first. So I'll always soften it in like this first, okay? And then I go up into that pink. You just make the lines nice and soft all the way along and then it comes across it comes right away across doesn't it so a little naples yellow a little crimson plenty of white and i'm going to bring it right across like this i'm going to go up this side as well very gently i just want a nice transition from top to bottom you see 
So the different colours are not standing out too much between each other. Then we come down again to that bluey colour. I'll take some cobalt blue, plenty of white. Now again, I need cobalt blue. I have just a little bit left on my tube here, I'd say. Just a little. Squeeze every last bit of paint out of your colours. There we go. Let's go into some cobalt blue. And some white. This may be a little bit strong. Um, I'll take a hint of pink and a tiny hint of Naples yellow in this. I'll take a bit more white then because I don't want it too blue okay I want this you see the way it all softens together there that's a nice color I like that nice and simple not too much not too over the top okay now I'll add a little bit more So that's my basic underpainting done. Now, if you want, you could leave this dry before you paint your boat. Now, I still have a couple of ripples and that kind of thing to put in. So that's my next step. I'm going to take this little flat brush. And I'm keeping this nice and simple now, okay? So what I'm going to do is take... I'm going to start up here with that dark colour, okay? So I'm going to take some cobalt blue, little crimson. And I might take a hint of black, the tiniest, tiniest amount of black. And the secret with this is, um, in my opinion, is to make this paint mixture slightly thicker than the one that you painted already. That will help it stick much better. Let's try this. I'm just going to go along and using the edge of my brush, now, it's still a little bit thick, you see it? It's not a very sharp edge. If you have something with a sharp edge, even better again. But this is going to be softened together anyway. So I just go along with my little brush. And I just flick it left and right, left and right. Okay? And then coming down this side. Nice and gently. I'm hardly touching my canvas here now, okay? Let this then sort of dissipate. It just sort of disappears out. Okay. I know my boat is here, so we don't really need to go any further than that. Take some of this mauve colour and perhaps come down here very slightly into this yellow. And I want to take some pink on my brush and just kind of warm this slightly down into that yellow colour, see? So then we have that lovely pinky colour coming into play. Now I'm going to just wipe that brush out, just give it a quick wipe and go into some crimson with some Naples yellow and some white. So we have a lovely kind of an orangey salmon colour coming in over here, don't we? So with that nice pink, I'm then going to start putting some of that in you see I'm going to just start softening it in here and there nice and soft speak gently to the canvas when you're doing this if you're someone who likes to talk as you're painting I do I love to talk as I'm painting um, I'm just going to kind of soften it in here and there you see just creating very light little ripples on the water remember this this is going to be nice and soft it's going to be softened in so you don't have to put very sharp brush strokes on this. Just nice soft little brush strokes. There we go, nice and gentle. Let's mix a bit more of that. It's a lovely colour. Lovely soft colour. And I come down then, just very gently across your blue, here and there, you see. So it creates almost lights and darks as you're painting it. It's fantastic, you see? You see now how simple that was? I just went across very lightly with a light colour. It was that simple. 
So I'm looking now, let me just take a look and see how we're doing with this. Okay, I might darken this ever so slightly. I go in here and take some more of the crimson, this mauve colour. And I might just add a couple of that nice warm mauve slightly further up. And if, by the way, if you don't have a brush like this, you could just use a simple, small, pointy brush. But it would be more difficult to get flat lines with a pointy brush. So something wide and flat like this will just give you that lovely, that lovely little line, you see? Just letting the brush hit and miss out of here and there. Now I'm going to clean that, clean my brush very quickly and I'm going to then take some Cad uh, Naples yellow and some white and I'm going to come down into this blue and pop a little touch of that whitey yellow through the blue as well and even up then into some of these so you're catching the light on the blue and it's transferring upwards. Okay. Now the next step is simply soften across. Taking away some of the brush strokes, making it lovely and soft. And I know this looks quite flat at the moment, but when the reflections go in from that boat, it's going to just bring everything to life. Okay. And we will add more later. So, my friends, that is our basic background done. Now it's time for the boat, and this is where it gets exciting. Let me find another brush now for this. Ba -ba -ba. I'm going to go for a nice small little flat brush. Let me find a nice one there. There we go. The boat, um, I'm going to just go with a nice shadow. Even though the boat looks white, I'm going to go with a nice shadow colour. So I'm going to start maybe with some cobalt blue, a little crimson, and then a hint of black. Okay, and then into that a hint of white, just to lighten it slightly. So even a nice bluey kind of a grey colour. Let's see where the front of the boat starts. I'm, I'm guessing around the middle. I'm going to go with the middle. Okay, and then... We just take a bit more white, then it kind of swoops down and around. Let's fill that in. I'm going to take a bit of the pinky blacky colour I already mixed earlier, that was black with crimson and I'm going to put that at the front of the boat Now again, if you're having trouble getting this right, you can, if you want, just leave the background dry fully, okay, before you do this but I just have a habit of painting wet on wet. I like to paint wet on wet. That's just the way I've always painted. Um, I find that when you're painting wet on wet you tend to pick up some of the colours from other areas and it just kind of helps tie the painting together much nicer. So I'm just going to fill this in now with a little of that there colour. Okay. That's not bad. Then I'm going to put a nice black strip across the bottom. A little bit of lamp black. I get a lot of questions about the blacks. Lamp black, Mars black, ivory black. Do you know, you can use any of them. If you're using them neat like this on their own, they just look black. Uh, it's when you start mixing them with other colours, especially white, that's when the colours start changing. So... Lamp black like this, for example, it's a very blacky black. There's a hint of blue in this. So when you mix this with white, it's just a nice grey. 
Um, Mars black is slightly, I think, on the browny side. So when you mix it with white, it's like um, a cappuccino, dark grey cappuccino colour. So just experiment with a few different colours of black and find one for you. But in general, I would use any black. If I'm using it neat like this, I would just pick up whichever black I have to hand. They're all pretty much similar um, when used neat like this. Now this is going to be the reflection side of things. I'm just pulling this in like that. So it's a kind of a nice transition from the boat down into the water. There's no kind of break where the reflection is. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take some phthalo blue. Tiny, tiny bit of that. And lots of white. And then a little hint of crimson. And I want to give this shadow a nice little bit of a glow, okay? Let's see what happens. Then I'm going to do it again. Let me get some clean white on my palette. And I'm thinking the boat needs to be a little bigger, don't you? Sometimes when you're close to your canvas, it's difficult to get a sense of the scale. So I will make it a little bit bigger, um, but let's just add a little reflecting white. Because the hull of the boat is white, but it's in shadow. So I'm going to add just a little hint of a glow to give you the impression that it's a white hull in shadow, okay? So a little bit of blue and a little bit of white makes all the difference with this. Then I'm going to go nice and dark towards the sides, crimson and blue, maybe a touch of white, okay? I'm using phthalo blue now, okay, from here on. And then I'm just going to pull that down, leave it softening. And I'll do the same on the back, just here. Okay, that's not bad. It's not bad. Now, let me have a quick look. We have some nice darker colours up higher, don't we? I'm going to go with black and a little crimson. And I'm going to go, let's just say the back of the boat like this. You don't have to be too particular with this. You can just put some dark lines in. All right. Um, just... Keep looking at the reference photograph and just try and follow what you see. That's all. Okay, we have a little bit of a timber coming out like this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Put a bit of shadow in underneath here. Because I want to kind of, I want to make the boat believable now i'm then going to put a little sort of like a cabin or something isn't it and then what i do is i just suggest little details see little poles bits of wire could be anything you see so I'll clean the brush again it's slowly coming to life now isn't it and then let's take, you can see the white cabin up on top. It's not white, okay? I'm going to paint soft mauve up there. Let's take some white, a little bit of blue, and a hint of pink. And then, you see, I'm just going to put that in like that. It's just really a series of brush strokes, okay? I'm not trying to kind of paint the actual top of the boat in detail. It's just literally little tiny marks with the brush. 
That's all it is. Because by the time all the sales and everything is done, you know, a lot of this is going to be covered anyway. So don't be too concerned about getting all of this little detail perfect. Right, I'm going to move on to a smaller brush, okay? A small, small detail brush. Very little, small, pointy brush here. But I'm going to take some black and just sort of refine some of these. Then I'm going to just start adding little lines um, just to add a sense of detail into this. Again, I'm not painting actual detail. You see what I mean? It's just a few little lines here and there just to make you think that it's lots of little bits and pieces on the boat. Does that make sense? So you can kind of start to see it now come together slightly. Okay. Let me take a little black and just pop a little black. You see a couple of little strings coming down here and there. There's one here. Um, we have a couple of bits here, like the anchor, for example. And then it's time to move on to our sails. And, you know, I'm keeping this simple. I don't want to go into too much detail about all of this. Um, so my focus in this painting will be just the reflections. All right. I'm going to put a little line. Just like that, okay. And we will concentrate next on the sail. sails. Let's get something. Now, this doesn't have a sail, so I'm going to put a sail in it, okay? First of all, I'm going to take my palette knife, my nice sharp edged palette knife, like this, yeah? I'm going to take some black. Because this is a sunset, most of the darks will be just black, all right? Let's go up to center with this big, big, big sail we have here. Just take the knife, a little ridge of paint on the edge of the knife. Let's go to the center and let's just go straight up like that. It's up to yourself how high you want to go with this. I won't go too high because again, I'm thinking about proportions. Then I'm going to just go to the other side. Carefully dabbing it just to make it thicker okay then I'm going to take some cobalt blue and a little hint of that white so this side is not going to be very dark I'm going to go just with a tiny bit of paint on the edge of my knife this side here okay so let's go from here right up tip of that you see, it's just a simple line. Just one single line is all you need. If it hits and misses the canvas, that's perfect. Uh, let's go again. Let's try the other side here. Okay. Like that. And then in between, we have lots of tiny little lines. Now, you could use a very fine brush for all of this if you like, but it's very difficult to get a straight line, line with a fi fine brush if you're like this. Very difficult to get a straight line. So this palette knife is perfect for that. I'm just going to start adding a few little lines. See? Little dab. Now we have a nice one there like that. And a small one coming out like that. And a couple coming down here and there. See how fast that was? All those lines so quickly. Um, right, that's our lines done. I might thicken that post in the center just slightly. I think it needs to be a little bit more 
prominent is that the word it needs to stand out just that little bit more so I'm just running my palette knife up and down moving the paint okay I like that that's not bad now I'm even thinking higher with that post I think it needs to be a bit higher just for the purpose of the scale that's all next I'm going to put in a sail now you can see it doesn't have an actual sail I'm going to put in a nice dark blue kind of a sail on this one here first okay some phthalo blue and cobalt or even you know what just some cobalt on its own and let's just give it a couple of dabs like that okay that's to imagine just a sail bundled up see just nice and simple a little bit up there like that okay now we could give this a little bit of highlight if you want touch of white just along here and there along the top the next one is going to be the biggie um, I'm going to add a purple sail into this if you saw my picture on Facebook there's a big purple sail coming out now it's reversed on my other picture the one I have hanging in cafe the sail is on this side I'm gonna put a nice sail here okay a nice purple sail and because I'm working blind here now I have to be careful so I'm gonna imagine the sail is coming out like this okay and around I think that's probably the safest way to do the sail um, I won't go too big at the beginning I'll just keep it small and we can work upwards then so let's put a nice purple pinky purple sail I'm gonna go with magenta okay lots of magenta palette knife and I might take a hint of cobalt give them a little mix with your palette knife yeah just a tiny mix now I think that's nice as a base color I think that will do just fine so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to imagine the this is always nerve-wracking isn't it when you're painting something that you not that you can't copy from this is always a difficult part I'm going to start here I'm going to give it a slight curve on this side right slight curve then get plenty of paint on the edge of, of your knife again I'm going to go out like this and then back in how is that and then I'm simply going to just fill in all of this with my palette knife now that's how I did the painting on my Facebook page I just use a palette knife like this and it really is a wonderful way to paint and it also does prevent the paint mixing with the color underneath because if this was a brush that we were using now it would mix very quickly with the paint underneath in the sky so using a palette knife like this really helps sharpen up the paint now I'm going to go here and pull more of that and just drag it across cover the canvas okay I'm not going to worry about the fine lines especially with the corners and that kind of thing I can do that with a small pointy brush in the moment I just want to get all of this filled in Okay, let's just stop down for a moment and take a look at this 
Now I know on camera that looks very dark, doesn't it? It looks almost black, but it's not. It's a rich purple. Um, I'm going, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking should it be wider? Um, should it be wider out? Just to add more effect. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, I'm going to lighten it now in just some parts, okay? To allow the sun to kind of come through. Not that we have any sun, of course, but you know what I mean. Just to give it a little bit of a glow with magenta, Naples yellow, and a little white, okay? So let me say here. Like that, okay. Then I'm going to take a darker colour. I'm going to go with some magenta and some phthalo blue. Plenty of blue, okay. Then I'm going to give it a hint of shadow in here. That's nice now, isn't it? Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to, I just want to get rid of all those knife marks. So I'm just going to take a dry brush and I'm going to very gently pull those down. Look, soften them very gently together. You can still see the brush strokes, which is absolutely fine, but I'm just softening everything slightly together, okay? Just like that, that's all you need to do. Then I'm going to just refine some of the edges here, for example. Just give that a nice point. Give this one a nice point here. What I'm going to do then is take a little black. Okay. And I'm just going to a little tiny amount of black. Just on the back of that, okay. Now, if you want to give it a little bit more light, you can. A little bit of a touch of Naples yellow. Like that. Of course, you can leave the knife marks if you like. It, some people love this kind of knife technique. Um, I'm just going to soften it ever so slightly, okay? Just a little. And I think that'll look fine. I think once the reflections are done and all that kind of thing, this is going to look wonderful. So that's really this finished. I'm going to put that little boy in over here. There's a lovely little boy in there, isn't there? I'm going to put that in. Um, I'll take some of this cobalt blue. Nice shadowy colour. I'm going to pop that little boy in. Maybe a hint of black. Then just take a bit of black for the end. And soften a bit of black into the bottom of that. And then I'm going to put a little phthalo blue up on top. Like that. And a hint of phthalo blue at white. I know this is a lot of little things now, but they do make a difference. A little phthalo blue at white, just along the centre. Just dab it around in the centre, okay? That just gives it a little bit of light. Catching the light, you see? Now with that reflection, we can do this reflection right away. Take some of that dark colour again. And let's just 
gives a little wiggle here and there. You see, it doesn't have to be too particular. Just a simple little reflection. Then put a little bit of black. So it's transferring from the top down to the bottom. And a little one or two then just coming off it like that. Okay. And that's the reflection of that finished. How are we looking for time? 48 minutes. I think we'll call this part one finished, my friends. Because I really want to take my time and do this nice. I want to make a nice, nice job of this. What I might do is just take some of that blue and white. Just add a little touch. A little dab of shadow here and there. And I might actually lighten the side of the boat just a little again, okay? Just want to add a bit more of a glow on the side of that boat. Just to give the feeling that it's actually a white boat. Understand? Just white and a touch of phthalo blue. Okay, I call that part one finished, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Um, part two will be coming up very, very soon indeed. Um, I will come out and finish part two in the morning because I'm very busy today. I'm working and all that kind of stuff. So I'll come out and finish part two in the morning and I'll have it uploaded for you tomorrow evening. Does that sound okay? Let me just put another one of them there, okay? Just like that. And then a tiny little dab of colour just on top. Like that. Okay. Let me turn this here for yourselves. Did I zoom in? I thought I zoomed in there for a second for a moment. No, I didn't zoom in. I'm using my phone today. Okay. Thank you so much for watching part one. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, part two is going to be really nice reflections nice simple reflections but going into a little bit of detail okay don't go anywhere i'll be right back thank you so much for your support um and all the lovely comments and everything thank you so much i hope you're learning from the channel okay thank you and i'll be right back don't go anywhere <laughs>